hi welcome to threads of the time a knitting crafting sewing podcast vlog vlog thing that i decided to start recording my name is zephy or uh, if you've watched any of my other episodes which you maybe haven't um my whole name is zephania but most people just call me Steffi, it's easier. Um, so yeah, today's episode three, I believe. I haven't been doing a lot of knitting. I've been a bit busy with work and life and all those crazy things, but I can show you what I've been up to. So I have a I have another little finished piece, not a full completed object, but we're getting there. So I finished the back of the top of the 1930s dress that I'm knitting. So there's that. I remember in the last last one I said I couldn't count the stitches because of how many were on the needles and I just was hoping that it was enough or not too many it was like 30 too many but I don't mind because it's supposed to be oversized and as you can see this is the sleeve so it's supposed to, what's that? I dropped a stitch. Damn, I have to sew that down. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is the sleeve, and then it, and it ties together. But let me just get that, get that little bit. Hate drop stitches. If I'd noticed this when I was doing it, I would have a hundred percent. Ripped it back. Guess that's the way I yeah. Anyway, I've started the other side, but it's just a little it's just a little cast on noodle. Not much to report. I haven't worked on it too much just because it has the three balls on it and I really have to think about it when that's the case. So you basically knit in Taja so the, even the cast on edge has the three the balls, three balls and then there is a point where you have all four, three colours on, but four balls. So, but yeah, let me, let me just get, I'll put this peg on it. Good thing I noticed that. I'll have to sew it in before I continue on. The other piece I've been working on is the front side of Josh's, my partner's jumper. I have had to rip this back a few times because I crossed over one of the cables wrong and then I dropped a stitch. So, but yeah, I'm almost up to the armhole cast on, which I'm really happy about. Actually, I'm going to use this little clip for my other one. But yeah, all the other projects I've shown before I haven't really worked on. But I was expecting that 
because I have not normally had so many projects cast on at one time. I did have another one on the needles that I haven't shown you at all, but I decided to frog. Hang on, let me just read it. So, it was a vintage mint. You can see I've started frogging it. And I decided to frog it because based on my calculations, I was not going to have enough yarn. So instead of risking it and knitting it until 98% completion and not having enough yarn, I decided to just rip it back. And I'm, I'm going to knit a similar design, just not as loose, because this is a 19, late 1930s pattern. It had like little puffy sleeves and it would have been like a little bit loose. A little bow tie, actually very cute. I think another Jack Frost pattern. Um, but yeah, I decided to rip it out, and I had pretty much. And the thing is, I didn't think I could finish the sleeves, and I didn't want to try and figure out how to knit different sleeves because I like the design as it is pictured. I didn't really want to change it, so. Yeah. And I just thought that it was going to be a little bit too long and a little bit too, like this band, maybe a little bit too small, but it doesn't seem like it. I just, I just was unsure of the fit, so I decided to rip it back. Um, I have been spending a few of my Sundays sewing over knitting, which is why. I look like there hasn't been very many finished projects. So I was, I've been sewing another dress based on the same pattern as the blue dress that I was wearing in the other one. And this, so it's this one. It's a a cotton jacquard. So it's got the, the it's got the floral print and then it also has like a textured floral pattern in it as well. So yeah, I'm almost finished this. I just need to do the buttons. Um, this time I've decided that I'm going to do a zip rather than the press studs just because on the other one I just, I just feel like it's a bit loose and the press studs don't help and then I need to change the belt and there's a whole bunch of things wrong with it basically. Um, this one I decided to sew like waist ties on instead of doing a belt. So they'll tie from the front bit down around to the back and I might put that, put a little buckle or I might just tie it, I haven't decided yet. Um, I also, I altered the sleeve pattern, so I just found the other one was a little bit small, so I altered the, like I slashed and spread the sleeve, and this one I also did with the darts rather than gathers and darts, and yeah, I think it looks good from memory, it is, it's, it's, the other one has a few problems with this sleeve. It kind of sags a bit as you wear it, just because the crepe, as it warms up, it kind of loosens up. So I just need to fix that sleeve. And yeah, I'll put a zip in the other one as well. But I'm fine with leaving as it is for now, just because it's we're going into winter basically. Not that this the summer this year has been very good. It's been very sad summer this year. My biggest pet peeve actually talking about the weather in Australia is when people overseas assume that everywhere is like Darwin. And I really hate to break it to everyone, especially the British. No offence if you're British and you're watching this, but we all think that like when we have 40 degree weathers, we all have air conditioning, but we don't. And most of the rentals I've lived in 
haven't had air conditioning. And our buildings were a British colony. They're built like British houses. So they don't handle the heat any better than a British house. So yeah, when it gets really hot here and you don't have air con, it gets hot, just like in Britain. So, but yeah, again, as I was saying, it's not hot all the time here. It's not like Darwin or Perth or anywhere there. Like I live in Melbourne and I've lived in Tasmania, the forgotten state basically of Australia. And it, it's cold, it gets cold in winter and especially in Tasmania, and sometimes, like, the average of a day in summertime, it's, like, 25 in Tassie. Like, that's hot. <laughs> that's as good as it gets. But, yeah, Melbourne obviously has more 30-plus days, but I'm a lizard, I, I admit. But, yeah, it annoys me that people always assume that because I live it, like, because it's Australia, it's all, like... The Gold Coast and unfortunately or fortunately it's not like we get cold winters and we get snow there are places in Australia that have snow like it's not all 40 plus degrees desert weather all the time sunny beaches naked bodies like it just isn't anyway that's my little rant pet peeve over I just yeah you can knit in Australia and you'll probably be fine. So yeah, both of this dress and the other one are more summer dresses, so I probably won't get to wear them for much longer, just because it is starting to cool down where I am in Victoria right now. So yeah, um, I have gotten a few stash acquisitions which I know some people don't like it when people talk about buying things in yarn and I agree it can be hard because I have been in that place where I can't just buy a $28 skein of yarn like every other week but I got I guess what would be considered our budget yarn so Bendigo Woolen Mills is extremely budget friendly and the yarn, it's all 100% wool for the most part. There are some other blends. And they come in all the standard, like the 4 plies, the 5 plies, the 8 ply, the 10 ply, 12 ply, that kind of thing. And yeah, so I've decided to get some. I didn't get all of my order because I have some on back order. But I got this, I got 6 of these. I really like this colour. It's coming up a bit red, I think, on the viewfinder, but it's like a muted rose colour. Um, this is a five ply, and I am going to knit that a vintage cable design in this when I get around to it. And I think this ball was like three dollars and seventy-five cents. So this is fifty grams. Um, it was in their sales section on the website. But yeah. but yeah, and I also got another skein, like another yarn. And this is how most of the yarn comes from Bendigo and Woolen Mills. Comes in 200 grams. So I got two of these because it's just a basic white and it it'll be handy to have because there's a couple of patterns I want to knit and I think they roughly needed like 250 grams so yeah so this is their luxury four ply I'll just bring it up so you can see um and I I think this they're about 14-ish dollars I forget the exact amount, but yeah, you know, normally for us here in Australia, like a uh, 50 gram skein, so this size of like patents or, you know, like generic 
classic brands. They're, they're like $14 or, well, 8 to 14 But yeah, if you buy Wendigo, do 200 grams. And that's like a top for the most part. You know, it's very affordable. It's 100% wool. It feels really nice. It's merino. It's super wash if you like that. I know some people don't. I don't mind super wash. I do like a rustic yarn more, I think, but super wash obviously comes with its own benefits. And yeah, really good. The others I got, I think I got two black ones. And I also am trying their three ply yarn because a lot of vintage patterns are between the what the stitches per 10 centimeters slash four inches so this is 28 on a 3.25 and I believe the three ply was a 30 stitches to four inches which puts it them both in the stitches per inch in a vintage pattern. Normally in a vintage pattern, not every one, but normally it's between seven and eight stitches to the inch. So both the four ply and their three ply fall into that. So I, I definitely got the three ply mostly to swatch. And then I think I might use it to knit a pair of stockings because I've been wanting to do that. I got it in black, so it's uh, it'd be pretty versatile. The three ply comes on a cone, so I think it's 500 grams. So lots of possibilities with that. But yeah, I'm really happy to have those. What else? I did also get a yarn club skein. I'll just go grab it. So this is it here. It's by Louis and Lola. I signed up for the Colors of Tasmania because again I, I grew up in Tassie for the most part. Pretty much lived in many places at this point. Uh, so the Colors of Tasmania is like taking inspiration from all the famous places in Tassie and yeah so this is this one this is the sticks forest I don't think I've been there when you live somewhere you don't normally get to go places all the time so that's that and I also got something from John Arvin Textiles it's the yarn sample packs so I really struggle to pick colors online because I think I'm afraid of color which is fine but I, I really struggle with the choices of color so I got the sample cards, especially for the knit by numbers yarn. So I wish I'd found this yarn when I was knit, when I was picking yarn for my 1930s dress because the knit by numbers is gradient colours and as you can see in my 1930s dress my gradient isn't that good. So if you do plan to knit that, I definitely recommend trying the John Arvin Knit by Numbers because they have really good gradients so you'd get the same undertone and everything. Uh, what colours do I really like? Um, they have some really nice blues. So I think they have three different blues. They have a really nice burgundy gradient. can't really see it's too far away. And yeah, I got the other um, yarns, so the Dianagelic, which is a sport weight, 
whole guy. And I just, just, I like, I like swatch pads because you can feel the yarn and you can see the colour. And it just really helps when you're trying to pick something out because the screen isn't always accurate. Um, yeah, and mostly I got it for the knit by numbers because I was looking for my next dress project as to what colour to knit it in. And I was thinking maybe the green, but now I don't know, it's a bit dark. I could do it in one of the blues. The pink's really pretty. Yeah. So yeah, got that. I mean, like, it was a little pricey to get, get just this posted to us, but at least that way when I'm picking the yarns, I have something to go back on, and I know I'm getting what I want and the right colour, because I find that I struggle to pick out yarn, because I can't see the colours, and I don't, can't feel the yarn and I don't know if it's what I'm going to really want in the end. So I might end up with a large collection of uh, sample packs. I wish every brand would offer sample cards, but not every brand does. So yeah, um, what else? Oh, I did get one more thing that's really cool. Put this up on my Instagram. I don't think any of you follow me, so I got some buttons from here's a little card from Fable Knitwear. And let me get out. I got I got out I got a whole bunch of them because I really want to knit some cardigans, and I have. Alice Star Mall Vest plan, so I was also thinking about that. Let's see. Yeah. That song, so. I'll come up close. So these are the ones I got. I got put more focus. Got these. We got this one. I might use this one on my vest, but I haven't decided yet. Um, it's either that one or maybe this gold rose. I also got the silver one and then I got this cute little cluster of flowers yeah these has a little like diamantes in them sorry about the nails they're super long I need to paint them or cut them but yeah really I really want to try her yarn as well and I mean like two of her patterns are on my make nine the owl owl I can't say that word still owl 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 blurry blouse and antiquity blouse they're both on my make nine so yeah exciting stuff and the cute little gold thing and I really like the logo. Yeah, I think that's it for today. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll reply. And yeah, hopefully you enjoyed watching this episode. If you've gotten this far, thank you. If you'd like to like and subscribe, that'd be great. And I'll definitely see you in the next one.